gosh, I have you on speaker. I'm here with Miss Walker. Hello there, Melanie Walker. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you, Josh? Oh, so far, so good. You know, it's a Sunday. It's a weird day, <laughs> but you know, every day is weird. Really <laughs> yes. All right, Josh. Um, what? I, I appreciate Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Of course. We're in this together. Yes, sir. notified me mid morning and she just kept pressing for about five days stating that people in the community were having symptoms but because of the CDC guidelines and the guidelines that West Virginia had put on testing it was becoming a barrier to that community who attended those two church events and so I reached out to Senator Minton's office and I said that this is a priority. We will not put this on a back burner, and I need some help. And I need to give a very big thank you to Senator Manchin for making that happen. Within less than 48 hours, Ramila, Tiffany, and I came up with a list of 75 individuals and passed that on to Senator Manchin's office. For those individuals who they could meet, and for those that was willing to take the COVID-19 test, it was completed. That was just only one win in this process. When we started receiving positive cases of persons that had already been quarantined past the 14 days, that brought a ultimate concern because we really are learning each and every day what this virus is doing. Well, then it really upset me because in the black and brown communities, there is a disparity of insurance. Even if you have insurance, you may not have a PCP. You may not have a family physician. And so now, how is that community, amongst the people who attended the church event, was going to get proper testing? Now, all over the country, we know that black and brown communities this disease has just came like a massacre. It is a mass massacre. Why is there not an exception for black and brown communities to get the testing? Why do we not have pop-up testing sites in the black and brown community? Why are the local elected officials not talking about this in their city council meetings why are they not talking about this in their county commission meeting? Why hasn't the state already had a minority task force so we can combat pandemics and other things that we are facing in this community? It's simply not good enough. We don't even know our numbers. But the biggest number on that dashboard is West Virginia is less than 4% minority. That dashboard before I got here said in the black community, we are 7.65. That is almost double. And you're telling me that we're not going to shine a spotlight on this? I thank the reporter from the Charleston Gazette of not letting this story fall. No, it wasn't a story. Not letting this truth fall on death duty. And I appreciate you guys for also picking it up. Well, what, what did you learn about the process taken by the, the Marion County health officials at the beginning of this? Because it sounded like Ramelia just had hurdle after hurdle that she had to jump through with them and wasn't being heard in her, in her mind. I am part of a committee in Montegalia County. I first asked that committee about this and what was Marion County doing. And the response was, 
quite frankly, it wasn't a very good one. I was told to call the Marion County Health Department, which is not my job, because I thought in this state, each health department was supposed to be talking to each other if we are actually doing proper contact tracing. The next week, I asked the question a little bit differently. The two events that happened, one that actually happened in Montegalia County, how many people have we tested? How many was positive? Is the National Guard assisting with contact tracing? Again, I was told that my questions would be answered at a later date, and they were. We had a conference call with Harrison County, Marion County, and Montegalia County Health Department Director. There were some staff, and also the epidemiologist, Dr. Gross. And I understand, it was hard questions. But what I also understand, this is a public health crisis. The vulnerable population is not just our elders. It is black and brown communities. It is anyone who has an underlying medical condition. It is someone who has a compromised immune system. Yet those folks are not even being brought into the conversation. And that is malice, that is neglect, and that is discrimination. Whenever um, you, you were first hearing about this, and, and now with hindsight, knowing what you know now about this, how do you think the Marion County delegation handled this? Because you represent Montegalia County, and she, uh, Romelia, expressed frustrations in trying to get a hold of her lawmakers, whether or not the phone number she was calling or, or whatever was, was not right. Uh, but whenever, how, how did you think that those people handled it? I mean, I know you, you have to watch about not stepping on toes or anything, but this church is in Mon County, technically, right? Well, I want to tell you this. If you have ever heard me speak, I always tell everyone to stay out because I will not only step on your toes, but your feet might be broken when I finish telling the truth of the people. I did reach out to one particular delegate in Marion County, and I will never disrespect any of my colleagues, whether they are of the same party or across the aisle. I did what I needed to do, and that delegate did what he needed to do as he reached out to the Marion County Health Department. Now, I don't know what that conversation was, and I will not critique anybody's way of doing anything. That is not who I am. So to be respectful to that question, I will not speculate, because I'm a truth teller. But I would suggest you maybe calling Mike Caputo, Delegate Michael Angelusi, and Delegate Linda Longshot. Sure. We need to look at, yes, getting an apology, and yes, addressing this now, what's happening now, but she says policy changes also need to happen, and this issue of disparity needs to be addressed. On the policy front, at the local and state level, what do you want to see done, and what can be done? We have a delegate out of Charleston, Delegate Larry Rose who has introduced a bill every year since 2015 that is very, very defined. It is a minority health task force, including 20 people. And in that bill, he really defines who needs to be on that task force. My issue is, Why hasn't the governor sent out an apology? Why has he not even acknowledged the deaths in the black and brown community? Why, when reporters ask the question, we dance around it, and we're not forthcoming? Now, I understand that DHHR says that we have a minority advisory board coming. But I would like to know, as an elected official, how many people are on that advisory council? Is the governor gonna appoint these people? Are we gonna put this out in the public so our public 
communities can possibly nominate someone, saying, saying it is one thing, but I need action. Words without works is a waste. I'm going to be very frank with you. Have you seen any of them on the governor's press conference panels? I would also say uh, no. And we need somebody there that is substantial. We need to see it on the forefront. Now, I know I sent a concern to the Herbert Henderson Minority Office. And Jill Upson did step up to the plate. But you know what? I would like to see someone on one of those press conferences that truly represent the black and brown community. We need inclusion and diversity in this pandemic. We do not need to hide. We do not need to, to make this a partisan issue. We do not even need to make it a racial issue because it is a human issue. And we just have people that are dying that just happens to have black and brown skin tone. And West Virginia leadership, who is over the pandemic, it is not good enough what you are doing to my community. Is there anything else I'm not asking or anything else you wanted to touch on? Yes, I would. This pandemic has brought a lot of chaos and confusion. It has even brought a lot of unity and peace. Folks who thought that they would never speak to the neighbor that lives a house over or two doors down, people are coming together to help each other. Whether that is with food, whether that is with guidance, whether that is encouraging to contact their elected officials, it is sad. And it is heartbreaking that we have not only West Virginia, but Americans who have not had any type of financial assistance for six plus weeks. How do you want our people to survive? They don't want to hear that you have received $6.5 million of two deposits, what they want to know is how will I put food on the table? How will I put gas in my vehicle as you are opening up the state? How will I afford public transportation to get to and from where I am going? How will you protect me if I am an ill person? Will you open up the doctor's office? Will you have a special seating for me? You are now opening up daycare centers. We have a state-funded program that helps working people and the working poor put their kids in daycare. Are you going to make those people lose their spot because of politics? I say no more. It's time that we put people over politics and we put people over profit. Thank you. Okay. No problem, I appreciate you. Thank you for the time. All right, you good, Josh? I'm good, thank you, Veronica. Yep, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, those are his questions. Yes. <laughs> I don't have as many as him, so. Okay. <laughs> and you also touched on a lot, so I don't want to have you. Okay. Daniel, you up for a... Uh election this year right election, yeah. yeah you know we could have went and we could have went on the head on and did the Juneteenth anyway and practice social distancing but I thought that it wasn't oh, we could have tried to we children don't understand that that's what that's one because of the children, children don't understand that some of our elders don't understand that you get caught up and you get such and such a hug because we have people that come out of state to right. celebrate this celebration with us, Don. Yeah, I know, I know. You I, know what we yeah. had last year? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was just going to be too hard, and I just, we're not giving a death sentence to anyone. Right, right. 
Oh, 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 oh. My question was actually going to probably be that same <laughs> okay. thing. All right. Um, but just to restate, um, for you personally, you know, being um, an inspiration to the community and some of us as a leadership position, um, what is your reasoning about not wanting to hold this event um, for the past It was a very hard decision to make, but it was so easy as we have lost so many elders because of COVID-19. We have lost sisters and brothers and uncles and grandmothers, but most importantly, we have lost a piece of our heritage. Now we know what slavery has done to black people. West Virginia does not have a death sentence. And I did not want to give a death sentence to anyone in the black and brown community. We have folks that travel from out of state to celebrate this with us every year. I just was not comfortable. And we look at the numbers. They are very challenging. We need to stay safe. We need to stay at home if we can. You need to do social distancing. Wear a mask. Not only for others, but for yourself. We matter, West Virginia. Yes, yes. Uh, I'd like to add that there's a possibility. I've read some articles saying that the sunlight, when, so when the weather warms up, gets into like into the 70s, the UV rays will kill off this thing. And there's, so there's hope, and we're going to make it through this thing, right? Okay, and we, we're recovering, and we're moving forward. And so we appreciate Delegate Danielle Walker, Tiffany. Is her last name Walker as well? Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> as well as uh, Romelia Hodges, okay? Yes, we do. Um, and then... I just have my question. Oh, um, uh, on the 30th, uh, he mentioned, he mentioned um, briefly in a press conference that um, he was getting calls um, about the African American community and the need for healthcare officials to be there for them. Um, the next words uh, out of, after that statement involved um, him mentioning that we need to be there for poor people, which in reference he was talking about African American But I don't think he meant it in a way to say like black people are only poor. But my thing is that, um, you know, within the black community, a lot of us don't go to the doctor whether we have a job that pays us well or a job that doesn't. Um, so from you, what do you think really needs to be done and um, what does the black community need to know about taking care of themselves and, um, you know, being aware that this virus is real? Education is key but you have to reach the black and brown communities in order to have those conversations. They should not be made to come to you. You should be able to go to them. And how do we do that? Where is the pillars of the black and brown community? The church can be one, but a lot of people are stepping away from the church. Social media can be one, but then we have a broadband issue in this state. And not all of our elders deal with social media. So we should depend on the news, the newspaper, and the black and brown community has to send it to them word of mouth throughout the ages, since the beginning of time. And we need to respect them. You need to find in each community the leaders, like Amelia Hodges, Tiffany Samuels Walker, and you really need to get that information to them. You see, we don't even have a seat at the table because we don't even know where the tables are. We don't have a seat at the table because we don't even know when the conversations are happening. We have prominent black leaders. So don't tell me that you can't find us. West Virginia State, NAACP, we're here. The local branches, we're here. 
our future West Virginia, we're here. Don't tell me you can't find me because you can't see me. Take off your blinders. Remove the barriers. Let go the stigmas. Why did you not go to a doctor's office? That is the question. You do your surveys, but that could be done if you had the minority health task force. Thank you. Do you have any other statements or anything you want to put out there about Juneteenth or To all communities, because I believe in the power of one. One love has been my mission since 2017. What I tell you right now, doing this two minutes, is we're a helping team. It is a hand up, not a hand out. If you need help, you contact me. 304-702-0647. I am here to listen to you, not listen to the song. Words without works is a waste. And Mountaineers, you are no waste to me. Unity and solidarity also. Always. I am Delegate Danielle Walker. Okay. I'd like to say one more thing, too. Uh, even though, just on the record, right, real okay, quickly. Yeah, okay. One of the things that we do do in West Virginia Black Community Coalition is that we network with the entire community. Uh, I, for instance, may be a Muslim, Danielle may be a Christian, but the interest of our community goes beyond what we look like or what label we have. And again, it was necessary for us to be able to do this to bring blackness. I mean, to show, show us how to love one another. And the Juneteenth, it actually does that. We come together and see each other beyond our labels. And so that's why, you know, it's very important that we continue with this. Even though we're going to cancel, we hope to do something else to replace it, to give members of the community an opportunity to vent and talk about their experience, possibly with COVID-19, if they would like to. So uh, we are at uh, West Virginia Black Unity Coalition. My number is... 681-753-8258. Thank you. Okay. Great job, guys. All right. Thank you so much, Ron. Yeah, I hope I didn't take too much of your time. No, you're fine.